Okay, the drawing is complete. I'm going to pick this up now and show you exactly what I did before I start taping. Now, what I want everybody to know is that I use 100% cotton canvas. The canvas is made by Fredericks in Georgia. It's a good machine primed canvas. I prime it once more because I like the whiteness of the gesso paint that Utrecht makes. By the way, I use Utrecht paints. I've tried them all and I find that Utrecht paints is the best paint for me. I hope it's as good for you when you try it. As far as brushes go, I tried them all again. I use Robert Simmons acrylic brushes. I find that they're very good for painting acrylics and they do last a little longer than the others. Now, from a small pencil sketch, which I don't have anymore, I don't know why, but I threw it out. I've taken a small pencil sketch and drew it onto my canvas. The canvas is perfect. The drawing is perfect. I'll pick it up now like this and show you exactly what the drawing looks like. This is my drawing of what I'm going to paint. When I get done with this painting, it will hang this way. I will now begin to tape the area and when I get done with the taping, I will show you exactly what you have to do to begin painting. Okay? I will get started with the taping. I will show you exactly the way this will be taped in. Very careful. But this whole area must be taped out. It is very important, like I said, that the drawing must be perfect because from here on in, it is nothing but going over the complete drawing. The only thing, instead of pencil or charcoal, whatever method you feel like using, the only difference here is that you are using masking tape as your tool to take care of your lines instead of, like I said, a pencil or charcoal, whatever you prefer using. I must stress the point that you must be very, very careful with the X-Acto knife because one slip of the knife, what I mean by that is a little too much pressure and you are through this canvas. I also want to say that hard edge painting is not the easiest type of painting. I just creased up the tape which is no good because I think I'm rushing and I can't use that no more so I'll take over from here. Hard edge painting is not the simplest way to paint, but is a rewarding way of painting. I always specify this to people that want to know about hard edge, and I must repeat myself again. In hard edge painting, there is no margin for error. Hard edge painting, to me, is like walking a tightrope. A little too much to the right or the left, and you fall off your tightrope. Again, there is no margin for error. Once you mask and tape the area and you paint in the line, there is no way that you can scratch out that line. It is there permanently. The reason for that is that when you apply the tape, you are building up just ever so slightly an area so when the paint goes on, one or two coats, whatever, it builds height. Even if you have to change the color, the color actually you can change. The color is not hard. If you paint an area light blue and you decide to make it a darker blue, that's fine. That could be done. But there's no wiping out a line like in watercolor or oil painting where you say, I think I'll wipe it out and start over again. No way, boy. I am what you call a creative artist. I don't even know myself what I intend painting. All I know is that when people see my work, they ask me, where do you get your ideas? I tell them, from my head. It is a creative type of painting. It's as original as you can get. I love it. I've been given the talent and I'm going to use it. So if you're into watercolor or oils, or if you need an area or something to look at 
then don't try hard edge. Do what you're doing. I'm almost done with this area because I'm not going to stay in front of the camera and do this whole area because this might take me one hour or maybe even longer. I don't know. So I just want to show you how I begin and then when I'm completely taped in, I will show you. Okay, I just got done taping in the whole drawing and I want to show you exactly what it looks like when it's all taped in, okay? Every area that I don't want to touch with the background paint is taped in. It's sort of like working like the masters because what I do is I work from the background out to the foreground. I put in my darkest dark first, which will be the background. Okay? I'm going to use burnt umber and I'm going to start painting it right now. I use a two and a half inch brush when painting my backgrounds. The paint already has been mixed and all I have to do now is apply it. I'll pour a little bit down here and this I will spread out as evenly as I can. I give it many, many up and down strokes because I want every streak to be out of the painting. I want it so smooth that people actually think that it was silk screen onto the canvas. A lot of people really think it's silk screen. And I feel great if they think that I'm as good as the materials that they use to make silk screens. In fact, when I use my graduation of color, which I will do later on in this painting, people come up to me and tell me that I use an airbrush or an air gun, call it whatever you like. Well, I've never used an airbrush. And if my paintings look as good as an airbrush, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Some people insist, don't tell me you don't use an air gun. Well, I don't tell them. They don't believe me the first time, it's okay. But now you can see that I don't because I'm painting it in. So we know now that it is not a silk screen and it is not an airbrush painting. Okay, I gave this thing, I'm sure, enough strokes that every streak is out of the areas. Like I said, when I'm done, I want it to look like it was silk screen onto the canvas. And believe me, painting this way is fantastic. There is no greater feeling than getting an empty canvas and finishing a painting and then putting it out on the market for sale and someone comes along and loves it. It is the greatest feeling on earth, completing the painting. If you can find a better feeling, let me know, because I can. I'm in love with my work. This is my life. I paint 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day, every day in the week, unless I'm at an exhibit. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this brush into the sink so the paint doesn't uh, destroy it on me. I've had it so many years, I don't want to lose it now. And when I return, I'll remove the tape and show you exactly what I did. Okay, I'm back. And now comes the job of removing the tape. This painting is still very wet, so you have to be careful and I'll probably get dirty as all hell. But anyway, I have to get going, so I might as well start here. Some people also ask me what kind of tape I use and where do I buy it. Well, I'll tell you, it's just masking tape. You could buy it in any uh, department store or any hardware store. It's just regular paper. 
paper masking tape. It doesn't have to be scotch. It doesn't have to be any kind of plan. Just tape, because remember, it's just a guide. As long as it's machine cut and it is straight, it's just tape. No fancy name, no fancy price. watching are probably saying, my God, how fast the tape is coming off, you know, and it doesn't look that hard. Well, let me tell you, after 25 years of painting hard edge and working with tape, I better get it right. <laughs> the materials do what they're supposed to do, and I do what I'm supposed to do. And together, we work like partners. I'll tell you, it's the greatest feeling in the world. If you've got any talent whatsoever, you should push it. Number one, don't cheat God of the talent he gave you. Number two, there is no better feeling than creating a piece of artwork. Like I said before, I love it. Everybody wants to be free, well, this is complete freedom. You might not get rich, but you'll be free. You'll paint when you feel like. You'll eat when you're hungry. And you'll sleep when you're tired. And no one will tell you what to do except your mind. And believe me, you do your best Someone will realize it and purchase it. Your pain. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Sometimes I go to bed so tired that I knock off in seconds. I'm fast asleep. I can't wait to get up in the morning. Believe me, I can't wait to get up to start painting again. Day is never long when I'm working, and I'm always working. There's so much I have to do before it's time to go. Okay. That's what it looks like with the background painted. Now I have to wait till this dries, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I paint one of these squares and get the graduation of color. Okay, we have the camera in a position where you could see exactly how I paint and graduate the color. The background is dry. I taped in the two areas I'm going to do and I want you to look closely and see the way it's done. I apply the white on first. This will be going from light to dark. Put the white in that area and put the white in this area, okay? That, by the way, is titanium white, and this is burnt sienna.
Okay. Now I will take a clean brush and start graduating. So please keep an eye on what I do. I'm into the burnt sienna now, and I'm slowly bringing it into the titanium white, which is on the opposite side of the brown, okay? I try to go from side, I hold this up so the paint doesn't splash on the clean area on the other side. I know it's splashing on my clothes, but they're only dungarees, and I just wash them and replace that. But anyway, this is where it goes. You very, ever so slowly, graduate the brown into the white, exactly like I'm doing. Not all the way, leave yourself some white, wet white paint on the end in case you get too brown that you can swing in with the right. But as you could see, up and down constantly, as smooth as you can till all the streaks are out and until it looks good to you. Don't forget to turn the brush around as you're doing side to side, otherwise you're gonna put brown in the white area and white in the brown area. All right, you put that down, you take a clean, sorry, you take a clean brush, and now you work with the white, up and down, up and down, okay? And you turn the brush around, and you do the other side. Okay, not enough brown, so I use the same procedure again. Brown into the white. Like I said, there's no margin for error. You have to work fast because the acrylic is drying. Now, if it doesn't come out right, you could always wipe it all out. As long as you don't remove the tape, you wipe it all out and you wait until it's completely dry and start over again. That's what I meant before when I was trying to explain it. You could paint in a different color in the same area, but you cannot remove the tape and get another line. Because the line that's down there first time will only build up in thickness and it'll always show through whatever paint you put on top of it. Okay, I'll be back in a minute because I want to put these in water. I'll be back in a minute to show you the way I pick up the tape and the way it looks on the Okay, what we'll do now is we'll remove the tape, okay? So it came out. Okay, here is the graduation of color, okay? Let me see if I can get this. This is the way it's gonna hang when it's done. But there is the graduation of color.